welcome to our Conscious Leader Circle, where we meet once a month to support each other through these epic and changing times. So we can be grounded, energized, and focused, and live a centered, connected, and conscious life. Today, I'm honored to introduce uh, one of my co-authors in our latest best-selling book, Evolving on Purpose, Co-Creating with the Divine, an amazing conscious leader of our time, Dr. Susanna Kurtz, who's going to be sharing her special um, approach to hypnosis, which is really phenomenal, um, and also her incredible life journey. Um, she has her own YouTube channel called Change, um, and she will share her story of how she changed her life in a fundamental way. Um, and this will help us bring a greater sense of empowerment um, and ability to navigate our own lives. Uh, so welcome, Susanna. Thank you very much, Lydia. I'm honored to speak here today. And uh, I think I'll just uh, start with a little self-introduction. Um, I'm a um, scholar, coach, and creator. That's what I've dubbed myself now. And um, that's because I have been formerly in academia. I've been a researcher and teacher at the university. Uh, and my... Um, special um, um, my area of uh, specialization was the cultural history of the Persian speaking world from the advent of Islam onwards and that's a really great region also a big region uh, of the world and uh, then I had um, let's say an existential crisis kind of a midlife crisis in my 30s uh, so it's a a little bit early, but um, it, uh, I think it ranges from the mid-30s to the mid-40s usually. <laughs> Some people are a bit late and come in uh, in the mid-50s. And um, <clears throat> that eventually led me to become a life coach. And uh, my main tool I'm working with is hypnosis. But I also have very strong creative urges. And uh, so I've also uh, done a lot of writing uh, picture and video editing and picture and video creation, drawing, 3D sculpting. I've developed a lot of those um, skills and uh, and interests in between uh, not really being in academia anymore, but not yet being uh, a coach. Um, so there was a time when I uh, had um, also long times where not much was happening. And I've done that um, a few years back, some six years back, I've uh, I had kind of an explosion of creativity and uh, developed that um, alongside um, a hobby I had chosen back then, which also involved social media and some publicity stuff. And actually now I have just started a little sideline, um, uh, which I'm currently mainly offering to coaches and healers and small business owners, people mainly people who have a podcast or a YouTube channel, uh, but also people who have been on other people's podcasts and YouTube channels, um, which uh, involves um, not only uh, a bit of video editing and repurposing audio then for, uh, for podcasts, but also uh, bringing uh, people and podcasts and their YouTube uh, stuff onto uh, platforms like the International Movie Database, and I'm just exploring how I can get uh, Wikipedia articles for people. So that's a sideline I've just started because I'm uh, one of those multi-passionate people who have really big issues uh, to niching with niching down uh, because I'm more like group and not so much, <laughs> you know. So. Um, I met uh, Lydia, as she has uh, already mentioned, uh, through our um, uh, book collaboration, our book bestseller, Amazon bestseller, Evolving on Purpose, Co-Creating with the Divine, which is now available on Amazon, if you are interested, as a Kindle ebook, and will come out as a paperback soon. Um, and that was a really great experience. And in the, um, yeah, uh, in the... Um, a preparation for that uh, we did an uh, interview on my youtube channel and on this channel i have an interview series that's called change 
it's actually bilingual. I started out with German interviews and then uh, transitioned uh, to more people who um, uh, are speaking English. And so I have more English interviews up there now. Um, and this change interview series was an idea I had um, to bring guests onto the channel who have either actively made a major life change or have faced a major life change and navigated that successfully, uh, by which I mean they, they didn't die in the process um, and somehow survived and are still there and uh, are ready to share their journey. Because uh, my idea was if you hear this kind of stories from other people and you are uh, yourself facing challenges and, and uh, big changes, um, or you, you you want to make them, then this can be an inspiration and an encouragement for people who are in a similar situation and can relate to that. And um, yeah, I think uh, that's also something that gets ever more important now in our increasingly changing and unreliable world, because that's uh, just how it's going now in the past couple of years. Uh, things have, uh, have changed immensely and uh, keep doing so. And I think it's going on that way for a while now. Uh, so we are used to, I think, very stable conditions uh, uh, that we had for 20 or 30 years. And now it's all changed. Uh, so we have to cope with that. So I think that uh, to have individual stories with individual uh, changes and challenges uh, can um, also for facing, uh, facing and dealing with those uh, bigger changes and challenges that we are all facing. Uh, so that is the idea uh, behind this uh, interview series so i'm actually i'm taking it i'm not doing very uh, uh, many um, interviews i'm not doing one a week or so because i usually take a lot of time for them we are chatting about one and a half to two hours then i uh, try to get it down to uh, a, a good hour for uh, the published interview so i'm editing the interview uh, and that takes a lot of time um, so that's why I'm not doing it very regularly, but I'm, uh, I currently have open spaces again. So if anyone is interested, uh, it's, it's a small channel right now, but um, I'm working on growing that now. And it will also go onto the International Movie Database soon. I'm just uh, figuring out if I put it up as a podcast series or if I can get it up as a TV show. TV talk show. <laughs> it's, it's just a matter of labeling. Um, and then it uh, it will be more visible over time. Um, and yeah, the reason why I had this idea, obviously, uh, to uh, create this interview series uh, is that um, I had this kind of changes and challenges in my life myself. It's also um, uh, one or two questions that I'm always asking all my guests, uh, they, they come from my own experience uh, with what a, a main challenge is when you are changing, especially when you're changing careers. And um, that's often uh, with my guests, that's often the case um, that they've at some point changed careers. Um, and obviously one of the challenges that comes up um, in that um, uh, connection is um, the question of how I uh, am I going to uh, uh, make a living and uh, that's something that was uh, the main thing that has uh, held me back for quite a while because I was um, uh, I had been very happy in academia for a long time because uh, the kind of it's the kind of work that suits me very well it's a, a mixture of research and teaching and uh, talking and you know you have very long quiet periods where you can just peacefully sit on your desk and work along uh, dive into books dive into uh, other worlds so to speak fi find out what's happening there what what do the, the authors of texts want to tell us all that sort of stuff which i really enjoyed but you also have those times uh, that uh, come up when you have a talk and or when you teach a class or when you have a conference and so this mix was really good for me and also a uh, play to my strengths and it's uh, really something I'm a very brainy person so uh, a very analytical person so that was something I really enjoyed for a long time and it was also um, my subject was also one that uh, gave considerable uh, 
um, uh, space for development because I wasn't nailed down to you know just one region, one topic. <clears throat> because the way it is done in Germany, mainly because we are not many people who are doing it, uh, is that uh, we don't specialize too much. We have a very broad uh, uh, profile. And so we can switch topics and we can switch. Everyone uh, creates an area where they uh, then uh, are mainly um, active. But you can, uh, I've, what I have done, for example, is I had a a regional and uh, and uh, linguistically defined area, but I have switched topics and I have switched times, and other people stay in one time but switch topics uh, or switch regions, and so uh, th there's a lot of space in there which is not uh, given in every subject. So I loved that for a long time, but then at some point I became dissatisfied mainly with the academic system first. Uh, because uh, you don't have, you know, you don't have the kind of um, career security and income security that you can plan ahead and, for example, have a family because when you have a family, it's, uh, the way I was brought up, you have to look at 20 to 25 years, you have to provide for, uh, for a child or children. And when you have a contract that runs uh, three years maximum, uh, that's just not a good fit you know uh, and and it's not like you have uh, a, a clear opportunities coming up but it could be you get another job could also be you don't get another uh, other job and it's not really related to uh, your competence and uh, what you're doing you could do really great work and have a boss who wants to keep you but it still doesn't happen because the money isn't there you know so uh, there's uh, or there's no no space at the institute and you can't get the money in. Uh, so that's uh, something that made me really dissatisfied um, at some point and that uh, was cooking inside me for a while. And uh, um, then at some point in 2014, uh, I also realized that I uh, was kind of yeah I I was I was working in what ha what had been my dream job. But I had to beat myself to the desk every day. And I said, something is wrong here. Some, something doesn't fit anymore. And so I started thinking about it. And uh, then, um, yes, yeah, subsequently, I, um, I found out that uh, uh, I may have to go outside of the system, but I didn't find a way to, you know, use my skills and my experience and uh, what I had achieved to that point uh, to monetize that in a better way than staying in academia where when you are paid you are paid well but <laughs> so um, that was something that has kept uh, ha held me back for for quite some years uh, from from uh, venturing outside of academia that I just couldn't uh, see a way how to how to make a living otherwise and uh, frankly speaking it's something that's still preoccupying uh, uh, my mind because I'm not that great on uh, you know um, uh, kind of shouting my services from the rooftops that's uh, uh, something that um, hasn't worked very well uh, for me so far um, uh, but um, it was still um, it was a change that had to be made and I was really scared of it. And um, a big problem for me um, in this whole process was uh, that I um, couldn't really find um, I couldn't really find my inner compass. I call it, um, or some people call it their intuition. Um, the thing is that uh, when I was younger, up to thirty, around thirty, thirty-one. Uh, what worked really well for me was that I knew what I wanted and I knew where to go, uh, what, which direction to go to get it. And when something came up, um, it was clear for me um, if this was right for me or not. So I rarely, I, I always said I have never made a, a decision, a really big decision, because by the time I would have needed to make a decision, it was already clear. It was obvious. It wasn't like... I need to make the decision. It was clear. It was, 
uh, that was uh, was true for uh, you know uh, uh, dating back to school that I, I wanted to choose uh, the language branch uh, at school when I got to to the next level to the secondary school. Um, that was when I when I decided which subject to choose at uh, at university. I did some research. I did some thinking on it, but it was pretty clear. Uh, really soon that uh, this is what uh, uh, has all uh, the ingredients in it, everything that interests me. And um, it was also true for my uh, my partner in life, for example, which was also a bumpy road <laughs> uh, to get where we are now. But, um, uh, but it was pretty clear for me very early on that the, this is the man, so that, that was it, you know. And, uh, and it was true for um, the job I was in by the time when I noticed here something wrong. To take this job was also a no-brainer because I had talked to the boss, and the atmosphere and the uh, the um, the conversation, all that <clears throat> was such that I knew, okay, that's it. I have to take, and, and it actually dropped into my lap because at the end of the conversation, I went there for an in job interview, and at the end of the conversation, he basically said, "Well, come on board," and that you usually don't get that because normally people have several candidates and so on but he had checked everyone else out before that <laughs> and uh, it was kind of like he went with his feeling and i went with my feeling and it was a really delightful uh situation uh, despite the fact that i then found out that uh, I, I can't go on that way but uh, this uh, this job itself was uh, was really good and was really enjoyable and the people were enjoyable and all that um, I haven't actually suffered all the, the, the brutal things that you can uh, hear from other people in academia. I've been very lucky uh, in there, but uh, I still uh, came to this point where, um, yeah, um, I, I knew this uh, kind of the, 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 the fire inside me, you know, the passion, the fire, uh, had kind of burned down. It's, it was like... Um, People use burnout for other things, but uh, if, if you talk about burnout, that is uh, an element of this uh, was was there uh, in the fact that just the energy and the passion wasn't there anymore. There was a little uh, spark still there, and I thought if I continue to force myself to do that, then this will die down too. And for that, it was too precious for me because it was part of my uh, of my personality also an important part. So I wanted to preserve that. I thought, okay, so I need to take a distance for a while. I also had kind of a, uh, not a real big burnout, you know, like people have who then have uh, have to recover for months and really, uh, really can't do anything. But it was like uh, my energy was drained um, after I, in 2015, my, my contract ended and uh, I just couldn't bring myself to, uh, to to do anything in this direction anymore uh, but I kind of continued then to frantically search uh, to, to uh, just to push myself to do things to frantically search for what else can I do now because here's a big black hole and I don't know what what's happening and how how to uh, uh, how to secure my livelihood uh, uh, especially and um, then I realized that I, I, I first thought it's something like, you know, uh, too little uh, vitamin D or something like that. And I actually talked to my doctor about that. And he said, yes, that's uh, the level is a bit low, low, but how did you come to, uh, how did you have the idea to have that checked? And I said, yes, uh, this way, this way. And uh, this is what, what happened and how I'm feeling. And uh, I had didn't have to do anything at that point because my contract was over. And I had one year, you know, uh, getting the um, uh, the money you get from the from the state when you have paid in. Um, so at that point, I, I wasn't really stressed or anything, but I didn't have the energy and I was tired all of the time and so on. And I said, yes, one of my former colleagues said for her it was vitamin D. And then he asked some questions, was a, was a very old doctor, very experienced old doctor. And he uh, asked some questions and then suggested uh, that it might be a psychological thing, actually, and uh, might be some kind of, he called it a, um, um, uh, depression. Uh, he said he doesn't like to talk about burnout in that uh, um, context, but that's just about the, you know, the, the definition of it. Um, it's just words, but that's also something I, I experienced uh, in uh, in summer 2015. So 
it was clear that this uh, wasn't the road anymore. But I didn't know what else to do. And I had this pressing need to do something because I had to bring in money at some point. And um, uh, so this is, I, I might not have been as stressed if I had been on my own, but if you have a partner and his life is going, going to go to shit if you can't bring in money as well, that's a bit more like a responsibility. Uh, and yeah, so what happened is that I um, realized that I had before. I hadn't had this problem of not knowing what to do with my life now. And it was, t was totally no new for me uh, in my mid, uh, late, late 30s, actually. And um, then I thought, OK, I have to somehow find my way back to this uh, inner compass I uh, had previously to find out uh, what's the right path now for me. And so I started digging and I found out that uh, it's not that it wasn't there anymore. It's just that it's not even that I didn't hear it uh, or didn't uh, didn't notice it. It's just that whenever it raised it, its head um, and it was kind of saying, you have to be self-employed, you have to be self-employed. <laughs> and whenever it raised its head like that, uh, my uh, my rational mind would come in and say, so, and how are you going to make the money you need? <laughs> and then it was uh, was over for that moment. So I realized it had just been buried under a huge pile of um, existential fears, essentially. And it's still something I'm moving out now. I've made really progress recently, and I've learned a lot about that in the uh, past two to three years. Uh, when I then actually got uh, uh, self-employed. Uh, but um, there was uh, some um, time in between where I was learning and I was trying to dig out my, my intuition, my inner compass, my inner wisdom. And that's how I then um, uh, eventually uh, found my way to hypnosis and hypnotic trance. And uh, the thing is that uh, when you can't really connect to this, uh, this inner guidance system uh, that we all have, uh, or you don't trust it, it's mostly because of noise uh, that uh, comes in all around it. And uh, that uh, may even be people around you who are saying like, uh, actually, um, I've experienced with my very lovely family and caring parents and all of them with this, can you get a job? <laughs> because they're worried. Uh, so it can be people around you who are who have doubts and are, and, and then essentially in sense and, 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 and spark all that uh, what is in inside you already you know you uh, you already have your doubts and you already have your insecurities and then they come and say something that makes that come up again uh, so that's not helpful but it's also um, very much the internal noise and the mind noise and uh, as I said this rational mind that comes and says well then how are you going to do that practically what's your plan tell me your plan and if you don't have a plan yet, because you just don't know, uh, that's not helpful. So you have to somehow go past this uh, this noise uh, to be able to connect back. And I've always been fascinated with uh, consciousness and uh, trans states and different states of consciousness and mind, and um, uh, with uh, also with uh, with, with uh, psi phenomena and all that, I've read about that uh, since my teenage years. I was always fasc fascinated with that. I always had the feeling I can't somehow can't make it work for me. But one of the reasons for that was that I had a completely wrong uh, idea of what a trance state is. So uh, expected something to happen and some, uh, to feel feel in a certain way and that never happened when I tried self-hypnosis, but that's because, simply because trans state isn't what I thought it was. Um, well, and so what I um, found out was that if I can get into this trans, into a trans state, first into relaxation, then into a trans state, then I can access 
a layer in myself, a deeper layer in myself that actually holds um, not only uh, often an answer or direction um, uh, with uh, knowledge about the direction that would be right now, it also holds um, a strength that uh, you don't always feel when you are in your day-to-day -day life and looking around and dealing with things and problems. And that's, uh, so I started out with learning um, a lot of psychology. Um, I couldn't do a university degree anymore because it would have taken too long. I didn't have the resources for that. And I also had to do it aside uh, being an interim professor for a while. Where, the way I was making a living, I was essentially capitalizing on all the work I had done before by mainly teaching uh, for someone who um, either had uh, had a, a term uh, off or, or um, was changing, uh, you know, universities and there was an opening and they had to fill that. And while they were busy filling that for two terms, uh, they then would employ me to do the work. And so while I was doing that, I uh, I also started to get a, a psychology education in a in a school that uh, does the practical parts um, here, and uh, I learned um, hypnosis. I learned to do hypnosis. I also really enjoyed uh, the uh, parts when it, during the training when I was being hypnotized because I love being in a trance state. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I realized that I, uh, I'm really, I'm really uh, kind of a, uh, yeah, uh, someone who is really an in, uh, enthusiastic about going into trance states herself, which is good because you go in a light trance state when you hypnotize someone yourself. And um, so what I did was uh, to get this edu education to start working first with. Um, uh, people I knew in my environment, and then I started my um, self-employed journey as a life coach. And um, that was in 2020, and I had just hit the lockdown when, uh, just when I had found a room, uh, found two rooms and furnished, was furnishing them. The lockdown hit, the first lockdown hit in 2020, March 2020. So uh, great timing. Um, I'm, I've mean I switched to uh, to online because it was just too uh, too expensive to uh, sustain those uh, those rooms, uh, especially at times when um, uh, people are reluctant to come in in person. But those uh, clients who came to me really wanted to uh, to be in a different space, so it was good to have the rooms for the time I had them. Um, <clears throat> and um, during this. Um, kind of uh, another bumpy journey during uh, self-employment, I then learned that um, there's not only the option to get into a trance state to access your inner wisdom, your guidance system, your inner compass. Uh, it's also um, a way, you also can do it through meditation, but you often go into a light trance state in meditation. I'll come to that in a moment. Uh, but um, that's also a way to connect with your inner strength. And I had really, I had really interesting experiences with that also. Uh, not only with the inner strength, also with, with other things that came up then, uh, which I could access here and there. Um, and that has then sh shaped what I'm currently um, maintaining as my main offer, which is the trans journey to the power within. And the thing is that hypnosis and trans states are often um, there are often a lot of misconceptions around that. They are often associated with show hypnosis, you know, where people are on stage and seem to lose control over what they are doing uh, and with direct suggestions uh, that facilitate uh, changes of behavior, like you go to a hypnotherapist and then uh, after that you stop smoking forever and things like that because they suggest that to you. And uh, uh, the thing is that the... Um, they are partly misconceptions on that because uh, one of the thing is that um, I don't think it does the real power of hypnosis justice, uh, which is in my in my opinion really is this accessing of deeper layers of wisdom and strength strength within you. And I um, I think it's good to focus on this uh, element also here because it's very close to um, what uh, what Lydia does. 
so uh, that's uh, centered, connected, and conscious is uh, something that actually is uh, is a goal to achieve with uh, uh, my uh, trans journey too. It's just a, uh, a bit of a different way to achieve it. And um, uh, the other thing is that um, you can't hypnotize anyone who doesn't uh, give their, their inner consent to it. So if you see someone on a stage who starts to uh, behave like a chicken or something, uh, that's not because someone else controls them. Uh, it's uh, because they, uh, for whatever reasons, have decided that they will go along with that now and will uh, you know, follow the suggestions uh, given. Because at any time in a hypnotic trance, you can opt out of that and you can bring yourself out of it very quickly. You also can keep yourself in it. Um, I remember that I've read about a very deep trance state where, uh, where the hypnotists, when they started to discover that state, um, were a bit worried first because they thought it might not be uh, possible to get uh, the clients out of it again because some clients just didn't react anymore to uh, suggestions to come back until then uh, at some point someone discovered that they uh, they could hear everything and they could have come out of the trance but they didn't want to because it was so nice so uh, the main trick that you learn as a um, as a um, hypnotist um, student is uh, uh, that in such a situation when you find that your client doesn't respond to your suggestions to come back, that you tell them uh, you can stay in the state. You can uh, I can also let you uh, let you go to sleep, and you can do that as long as you want. Uh, but I will have to charge you for the next hour then. <laughs> <laughs> And usually uh, uh, people then come back. So, <laughs> so but then it's their choice. So you don't, uh, you know, you don't, you don't force them back. So you give them the option. So uh, that's also why you have to schedule in a good, a good deal of time for this. And um, the other thing is um, obviously uh, that the trans state is not as alien to us as uh, as we might think if you, we haven't uh, consciously um, experienced one uh, before. Um, it's actually a state we naturally go into. We go into several kinds of trance states over the day, um, every day. And I found that uh, for me, for example, it's when I'm uh, when I'm uh, in a car, and especially when I'm not the driver. Uh, my whole family was uh, um, a couple of years back. I mean, I think that was in my in my teens. Was uh, yeah, in my teens when I started to become very chatty because I had found out that you can actually communicate with uh, uh, speaking, you know, you can communicate thoughts and feelings. Uh, I, I discovered that at some point in, in my teenage years, I think at 12 or something, 12, uh, 13, yeah, um, and I became very chatty. And once I sat in a car, I was sat in a car and we started driving, I became very quiet and I didn't talk and one of my aunts said, hey, are you still alive? <laughs> and so they, they started making jokes about how I'm starting to get like a statue in a car. But the thing is that it's just, I love the feeling of driving along. And if I have nice music, it's even better because I'm in a trance state then. And I love a, tra a good tra trance state. So that's just an example uh, that... Um, not everyone, but a lot of people can relate to. Obviously, it's easier when you uh, don't have a driver's license yet and don't take part actively in the driving process, but the other person doesn't uh, hit the brake when you would hit the brake. <laughs> so uh, it's easier before that age when you just sit there and uh, nothing bothers you. <laughs> um, but I can still do it. So that's the other thing, that trans states are a really natural thing. Uh, that we experience all of the time. It's also when we get absorbed by something very much. It, um, uh, it's a kind of a trance state. Um, and uh, then there's a the thing with the direct su suggestions. I know a lot of colleagues who uh, work with that and have very good um, results with that and um, make a good deal of money with that. And it's rather easy to communicate that actually to people that, uh, you know, for smoking, for weight loss, for all of the things, uh, mainly changing habits. Um, 
you can you can do that you can work with direct suggestions and uh, then uh, it can work for the person but it's i found that it's not my kind of uh, of thing um i have had um success with that with um a couple of clients i had two really extremely suggestible clients who were responding very well for uh, to suggestions to direct suggestions suggestions and went into a deep trance very fast um and there's also a talent involved uh, you can have a talent to go into trance fast or not so much and you can have a talent to absorb direct suggestions and to be open to that and not uh, or not so much i'm for example i'm not so much i love trance states but i have a very um uh, active uh, analytical brain that is always involved and needs to be addressed and um, <clears throat> um, that's probably why it's not the method that is best for me because I don't have huge success, uh, you know, this kind of miraculous success that you do one session and the person has no problem anymore. I had that. I had a client, actually I did it in, in English, I had a client um, who was skeptical of herself before and I also saw oh, with her because I knew her as a, a friend of mine. And I knew her and I said, oh, let's see. I said, Let, let's try. Let, let's see how it goes. And we did one session and it turned out that um, she has a very lively imagination and a real talent for that. And she went into the trance deeply and I gave her direct suggestions and she had, uh, she was, uh, you know, free of this problem after that. After one, se we had one session. After one session, she, she was completely free of the problem. Now, if you want to make that your business model and it works, uh, and you are really convinced that it works with everyone, and you just have to do it in a different way when the person isn't responding as well, then that's great for you. But for me myself, I think that is it's useful. I do use it on myself. It's the same thing that you use when you use affirmations. It's also something you want to feed your sub subconscious with that, you know. Um, and uh, you can do that in a trance state uh, effectively, of course. Uh, it's helpful. Uh, one can use it. I usually use that towards the end of the session then we, when we have worked out what is um, uh, a good thing for this person to, to anchor it in. But it's uh, not a thing I think is the main power of hypnosis. And the main power of hypnosis for me is um, not to stay on this, uh, what I would say, it's more of a surface level, you know, um, and go deeper down for exploration. And that may, may, might be because I'm, I'm a researcher by nature and uh, I, I think it's great to have a discovery journey. And that's what I'm doing um in uh, my trans journey to the power within um what we first do is of course is physical relaxation that's kind of a guided meditation i mean a hypnosis is essentially a guided meditation um to get the nervous system calmed down and to get you out of a place of fear and stress and anger and all that because you can't be relaxed and uh fearful or stressed at the same time so we get you out of that, get you into the relaxation. Um, and then, important thing is, uh, we get you out of your head. And uh, that's um, something I'm especially good at because uh, I'm always in my head. So I can quickly realize when someone is in their head or back in their head. And uh, then I bring them back into, into the body. And that's something I've learned uh, by going through trans journeys myself and uh, <clears throat> when the when the practitioner uh, the hypnotist uh, uh, quickly realized okay I'm in my head and they brought me down so and we mainly do that by bringing you into your body and body feeling and um, in that way then we can bypass the rational mind and uh, dive beneath it and that m may uh, sound a bit concerning to people who are uh, uh, think it's it's really important for decision making to have your ma rational mind there uh, but the thing is that after a session you always can um, use your rational mind on evaluating 
uh, what you have experienced. So it's not that uh, we don't want to employ that at all. But um, <clears throat> for the session, we want to bypass that and kind of dive beneath that so it doesn't disturb us. You, we can also appease it by acknowledging it and telling it, we know you want to keep us safe, you know, but this is something that it's not your area of expertise. So would you please sit back a bit? <laughs> and um, so you can uh, address that directly. And then we uh, narrow down the focus to an internal focus. And by that, we can then really discover things inside uh, us or inside the person who uh, uh, does the journey with me uh, and explore what comes up, what ideas, solutions, wisdom, resources. And you will experience the, the enormous strength that lies in, in all of us, essentially, at the core of us. And um, my technique essentially is to ask, first I lead you into, um, into the trance state and then I start asking questions to lead the way. So uh, to see, so we are knocking on doors, we'll see, can we go this way or can we go that way? And if it doesn't work, we uh, look for another way. And um, sometimes I suggest something, I say, can, do you want to try this? If something comes up for me, because I'm in a light trance state myself and may have, have a good idea for you. And uh, <clears throat> An important point is you don't need necessarily to, to be able to see or hear or feel or smell or taste in your imagination. That's helpful, of course. Um, uh, but especially when working with a hypnotist who uh, who can do that. But uh, there is um, uh, there's a spectrum in people, and some people uh, have a very vivid imagination. They can. I, I know one person who has that, who can within a second be in a full scene and fully immersed in the scene. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there are people who really in their imagination, they can't see anything. They can't they can't imagine to see something. They can't hear anything or feel or anything. It, I had a client like that. It's just It just doesn't work. And there's a spectrum uh, from everything in between. And uh, this uh, inability to, uh, to evoke this kind of lively imaginations, uh, the complete inability is uh, is called uh, aphantasia, and um, we can work with that as well because um, aphantasiacs usually just know things. So it's not that they uh, can't imagine something; they just imagine it differently, and they describe it as "I know it." And so that's something I usually, uh, first of all, I test it before I go into a trance state with someone, just so I know where they are. Uh, for using the right words, because if I tell someone to see something and they can't see something, then I'm starting to stress them out, you know, and they get stressed and then uh, it doesn't work. So I need to know, obviously, <clears throat> how to formulate uh, things. And um, then we can go by uh, however you can imagine things. And I have had uh, some quite interesting um, experiences with clients and also myself. Obviously, I've experienced uh, things myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't be so convinced of it. That's a, a very important thing always uh, to uh, to offer uh, something you have experienced yourself. And uh, I had one client who uh, had uh, suddenly uh, realized she had a heart area between the brain and the gut, which was the things she was aware of. There was the heart area. And in this hard area, she discovered uh, other resources and other options for herself. Um, and it was also a great feeling. And uh, that led to a reconnection with her needs. And they had been buried under ideas of duty and performance and all of that. She had put herself under really big pressure. And that realization and, and finding then made it easy for her then to uh, to make the practical decisions she had uh, uh, pending at that point. And uh, that was the reason why she why she came in to me, that she said, I can't go on like this anymore, but I don't know what to do. Uh, and uh, then we dove into that. So thank you for all of that. Um, I don't want to cut you off because it's a phenomenal talk and about all your change. I have yeah. so many questions. 
Uh, but we only have a few minutes left. Um, so um, or is there anything that you wanted to wrap up with? And then we'll open it up to the group quickly. And then you can guide us through if somebody wants to try. What is it that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, um, I have uh, I have just a few uh, lines left. It's not that much, sure. and okay. and then and then I had uh, what I've brought is a, uh, a short uh, kind of uh, guided meditation mini hypnosis thing uh, to try and see if you can uh, connect with your inner power uh, shortly. Um, and uh, yeah, the thing is. Um, so I'm I'm nearing the end actually. Uh, and that's great. I just want yeah. to stay on time because I know everybody has things to do. Yeah. And but I have so much to um, uh, to comment on. I mean, what a phenomenal story of transformation and change at our time of this paradigm shift of releasing the intellect, connecting with our inner knowing and our inner power, yeah. um, and how you're able to support us in doing that with your incredible uh, trance hypnosis. So so carry on, I just wanted to bring it all together. Yeah, uh, yeah, we are very aligned, I think, in, in, in that respect. It's very uh, fitting, fitting together very well. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, to have, uh, give w one more example, which was uh, some uh, client who uh, reconnected with suppressed emotions that had been suppressed for decades and then suddenly realized I'm not so weak. I, I can react differently if I want to, you know. Uh, so that's that's just uh, experiences I wanted to share. And um, uh, one important thing that you uh, take away from this kind of, uh, of uh, hypnosis journey, trans journey, is um, uh, a deep conviction in what is right for you and what is good for you. Uh, because the thing is that sometimes we are aware of that, but we have all this noise inside and uh, externally coming at us. And then it's easy to deviate from that. And uh, when you come out of this uh, trans journey, and I'm trying to anchoring, uh, anchor that in at the end of the session with direct suggestions then also, um, uh, is a, a very deep inner conviction that you, you really know. Also, sometimes it's just, it's okay as it is, and I don't need to force this or that or the other. And But you have this deep inner co uh, conviction that this is now right for you. And then it's easier for you to stay with that even when other people try to convince you otherwise. I think it's often other people who uh, who, uh, who actually care about you, but, uh, but just can't decide what is good for you. <laughs> so uh, that's this thing. And yeah. Um, I have a little gift uh, that's uh, that's a, a new addition I am making because I've been channeling little stories and parables recently. So when I am in a trance state, and I have been suggested by um, by a coach to uh, to uh, develop something an offer where I help people to connect with their stories, and uh, I'm still uh, testing out and trying to figure out how what the framework for this could be. And what I would like to offer is I have uh, uh, three options for uh, uh, pay what you want thing where I just channel your story for you, what comes through for me and write it down and send it to you. And uh, then if you want to dig into the story, for example, in a trance, we can uh, we can uh, then meet up for that or or, or or we don't do it. Uh, that's that's up to you then. But that's uh, that's. Uh, three spots I have if anyone is interested in that as a, as a little gift. Uh, um, and if someone is interested, uh, you can connect us then, Lydia, and uh, just uh, point them my way and uh, for contact data. And then I'm uh, going to um, I'll these uh, requests and then we can set it up uh, if someone is interested. And I've also, I've also a book in development about uh, the stories that I have been channeling so that is hopefully going to come out this autumn that's awesome um, put your contact information in the chat uh for people today who'd like to um contact you about the first the first three people who contact Susanna yes. for her special offer um if you could put the contact in the chat and then for yeah. the replay um after you do that if you could um provide your contact information and yes. um, so people listening 
on my podcast and um, through YouTube and other means, I have a way to contact you directly. That would be amazing. Okay, so I've had, I've um, put my email uh, into the chat now. That's the email uh, I'm using for this, and uh, I'm also available on uh, on Facebook. I have uh, my Facebook page, um, and I have a personal profile where I can be contacted also. So if you are on Facebook, um, that, that's sometimes uh, sometimes a bit bit easier for uh, chatting back and forth, but email works uh, works as well so um i'm just i'm just typing in the name of the facebook page and then uh okay and then after you do that if you could just um if you could just share it verbally for people who are going to be listening to the replay okay that's well, just uh so that's okay. just on facebook susanne quotes coaching um and yeah, we can perhaps for the replay, we can put it into the description. Um, I can also put it in as a wait, as a link here. Uh, the reason why I'm pointing to Facebook is that my business page is still um, in German. I have to fix that, but it's a bit of work and I haven't had the time for that now. But on Facebook, I also have all my offers in German and in English listed on the page. So uh, that's easier for English speakers to uh, to get uh, um, to get an overview and uh, then to get into touch. So um, then I would I, I uh, we have a question and answers right before we do. Uh... No, but was there anything else you wanted to to share before we open it up? I know it's 12. So yeah, well, what I have what I have going uh, on the uh, creative side is a high fantasy TV series project. I just want to mention that it's something that is uh, meant to inspire, and um, uh, to uh, it's about um, it has a lot of themes and everything, and all my skills and experience poured into it. Also, a bit of a different setting, um, but it uh, has one main theme that uh, should resonate here, which is. Um, Overcoming clash of cultures by spiritual uh, uh, development, involvement, um, and uh, uh, basically going into the direction of we are all one and uh, with with all our differences. And uh, I, I just want to mention that because we are currently looking for advisors, for ambassadors, for sponsors, all of that uh, sort of thing. So with or without uh, uh, money. So that's. Uh, that's a big passion project of mine. So I just wanted to mention that. Other than that, I'm essentially finished with the content side. Uh, I have this uh, little meditation if you have the time for that. And obviously I'm open for questions. Okay, well, thank you. I have so much to comment. I mean, you're so many of your themes of your own transformation are universal. And I've been through my own and many people here um and listening have gone through changes in life and are trying to connect with their inner compass um and their inner knowing and this is going to continue on um for decades <laughs> so <laughs> so any any way we can start to master that and align ourselves with our true passion and purpose and mission um is really phenomenal and your your huge heart um, and your, um, you know, just the truth of who you are shines through always, Susanna. And so anyone who has an opportunity to work with Susanna, I highly, I highly recommend. It's a phenomenal experience. So any questions about, um, there was a lot, a lot shared today um, that uh, you want to ask Susanna about her journey, about hypnosis. And then for those who can stay, we will experience some of um, her uh, phenomenal, a taste, a little taste okay. of her phenomenal trance hypnosis. Any questions? Anybody want to share anything? Can you can relate? Anybody? Yana. Yeah, um, it was very interesting. Thank you so much for your story and, and how you've evolved over time. I think many of us can relate to having those 
going deeper inside and trying to figure out what's going on without all the noise of everybody's opinions and everything like that. Uh, well, family can be especially that way, right? Your own sibling group. Um, and I've had some experiences with hypnosis. One of my close friends does the QHHT that Dolores Cannon does, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with. I just wonder, do you, do you sometimes go into past life, uh, with your sessions or do you stay with kind of uh, the current? I've, uh, I've learned that. I've uh, done a course in past life regressions. I really like doing that, but I haven't actually haven't had anyone asking for that. And I haven't put it uh, very prominently as an offer. So I'm open to that if someone is interested. Um, but uh, I'm not, I, I, haven't, I haven't done it very often. I've done it in training mainly. Yeah. Well, sometimes I know it can just happen by accident, right? Like yeah. <laughs> where somebody, do a regression, yeah. just, somebody just, oh, they just happen to be somewhere else. So, you know, but yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, yeah. Anyway, it all sounds really fascinating what you're doing. And I actually, yeah. oh, sorry, Susanna, go ahead. I, I actually had my uh, perhaps my deepest and longest uh, own trance um, experience uh, with the journey to the life between lives, uh, according to Michael Newton, uh, which goes through a past life into the um, life between lives, the, the world between right. uh, lives where we are there. So uh, I'm really fascinated uh, by that. And um, uh, yes, I would like uh, to do that. Uh, sometimes or more often um and uh yeah i generally know how to do that i i'm not uh i'm not educated in the michael newton um uh, method uh but uh in another method uh but yeah so that's it's, it's really something i'm uh, i'm uh, fascinated by myself yeah wonderful any other questions yeah. and then whoever wants to stay on or is able to um i'd love to experience um a taste of your trance hypnosis so any other questions anybody for for our wonderful Susanna I've, okay. I've, right. I've talked so much that no questions on this well that's okay it's just the time it's just the time because um yeah I know hour. yeah I I'm, I'm I've gone over time because I was kind okay. of uh I had kind of one hour in my head but you said 25 minutes right <laughs> Yeah, about 25, 30 minutes, but that's okay. It was all meant to be that way. And it was phenomenal and uh, such richness of, of information that you shared. We could do a whole, you could do a whole masterclass on, on that. I don't think we can fit it all into um, a 25 minute talk and then, uh, <laughs> and then a group gathering. Uh, but uh, thank you so much. And um, I would love to experience um the uh your uh your sample session so i'll let's all un let's all mute and then we will hand it over to Susanna. great thank you uh so this is um kind of a guided meditation mini hypnosis um it's a into a light trance state so this shouldn't be a problem for anyone but uh i just have to say this uh, as a cautionary measure if you have any uh problems like mental disorders or epilepsy or um, uh, cardiovascular diseases or diseases of the nervous system then it's better not to take part unless you know it's okay for you because you have done it before and it's okay with your doctor and all that so that's just something i have to say before and <clears throat> then i'm changing in my <clears throat> into my hypnotic voice so just take a deep breath in through your mouth and hold it for a few seconds and exhale through the mouth again and then inhale through the nose, hold it for a few seconds and exhale through the mouth. And then repeat that once, one more time. Inhale, hold for a moment and exhale. And relax all the muscles around your eyes. 
just letting loose, just letting everything go. And then I would like you to focus on the feeling of your feet, your feet on the floor and how your soles touch the, the ground and how the ground feels beneath your feet. And then slowly move up through your ankles and your lower legs, through your knees, just feeling what is there to feel, just feeling into it. And you move up through your upper legs and then slowly in your own pace you move into the place in your body where you feel yourself the place of me the place where you feel your core and that can be very different for different people it can be around the solar plexus or the heart area, somewhere in the chest, mm -hmm. but it can also be in a completely different place. I'll just give you a few moments to find this place where you feel yourself, your core. And when you have found this place, then just very gently feel a bit deeper into it. And yet a bit deeper. Gently reach down into the core of this place and just feel into it. And then stay there for a moment. And maybe, if you are visual, maybe an image comes up or a color or something. Maybe you can see something or maybe you can hear something. Or maybe you can feel something special. Or maybe you just know this is the core of this place. And just Stay there for a few moments and check in if maybe there's a message for you. Maybe something comes up and if you feel or see or hear or know that there is a message for you, what would that be? What would it say if you wanted to say it out loud? What would that be? And I'll just give you a moment to dig into that and see if something comes up. And if nothing comes up, it's all okay, it's all right, it's all good. Don't need to force anything, just see if something comes up. Maybe it's also just a feeling. And now I'll slowly bring you back by counting from three to one. And when I reach the number one, you will feel awake and refreshed. 
three, slowly coming back. Two, feeling relaxed and refreshed. One, fully awake and refreshed and ready to go about your day. And maybe you want to smile a bit. Oh, I thank you so much. I just thoroughly, so, I love that. I love that. I'd love to hear if anything came up for anybody. And then I'll share what came up for me. Yana? Oh, you're on mute. You know me, anytime I'm in that, I see you. <laughs> it was I, when you were talking and you, you find the place, I was sort of kind of back and forth between my solar plexus and heart, like all in this area. And then we were sort of, when you were going deeper, there was just like this long cylinder, just sort of we're going all the way down, like you were going right in. And then all this beautiful pink, pink color just was everywhere. And just like you're almost in um, like the dusk time, like the really beautiful pink. And then it looked like um, sort of tops of trees and then all this beautiful pink everywhere. And then it sort of stayed for a little while and then it kind of faded back in and then as you kept talking a little bit later it all came up again and and went back in and it just felt like um just peace kind of was just the word that kind of came up it just felt really really very very peaceful it was just beautiful the pink was just absolutely stunning Great, that's that's an awesome experience, really. <laughs> I chose I chose this little meditation because that's something you can really easily do yourself, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you when you find a place you you like and you you love it there, and so you can go back there whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you have any Dawn, did you want to share anything that you experienced? Yeah, my, my center was my solar plex, and uh, the words I heard, it was a knowing, it wasn't a feeling, I just know that's where it was, um, but the words I heard was, be kind to myself, and I heard that over and over and over again, and the other thing that was weird, and it's been happening a lot lately, is I've been running Sudoku numbers through my head, and it won't stop, and I'm doing it in the middle of the night during the day, and I'm filling out Sudoku all the time. It's crazy. So I'm working with numbers constantly, subconsciously. And I don't know what that means, but that's what's happening. <laughs> that's, that, that's really great. So you had a really verbalized message. Yeah? That's... I did. Yeah, and I kept um, going on and on. It wouldn't stop. It was just like, it was on yeah. repeat. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, Well, I think that's a really clear sign to what what to do right <laughs> absolutely be kind to myself <laughs> well, i just have a quick question don what's your if you could have one word response to the the numbers running in your head what's your first what's your first intuitive word that comes up sequence oh. so, so tell me about sequence it's the repetition of and the problem solving and making everything fit. And the sequence is the method methodology in making the puzzles fit together and work. So tell me about uh, fit. Hmm. Good question. <laughs> uh, fit. Uh, making sure that it's a completion. That's that's the word I would say. It's fitting as completion. One more. Tell me about completion. I know it's the why, why, why question or what, what, what. Um, completion. Well, that's the cycle we're in in the nine month. It's September. It's the ending of cycles and the new beginnings. And that's what I've been feeling a lot lately. It's the completion of something and getting into a new beginning. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you.
That's amazing. That's amazing. It's very well, it's my birthday next week, so that's why it's going to be a new beginning. There you go. There you go. And it's amazing that those numbers are coming up. I mean, all the time. I'm running them in through my subconscious all the time. There you go. You're in a flow. You're in a flow. Maybe, maybe in a, a deeper trans hypnosis a session would help. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. April, did you want to share anything about your uh, experience? You don't have to if you don't want to, but if you did want to share, feel free to do so. We're here as a group. No? Okay, that's all right. Uh, what came up for me was the word stay. It was the first flash. And then I let it flow. And it was like, stay with what I'm doing. Not that I was going to change my life or anything, but, but just stay in alignment, stay on track. Like, just stay. It just kept coming up. These This word, stay, 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 stay. So um, as some of you may know, and when Susanna interviewed me, we talked about the flow state of non-attachment. And so we want to stay centered, connected and conscious in everything we do. Um, but part of mastering the flow state of, of non-attachment um, is, as Susanna was saying, not getting distracted by external uh, stressors or external influences you stay right on track in your mm -hmm. so that was wonderful clarity uh for me Susanna thank you so much thank you I mean that was really really interesting to hear your experiences and uh uh I hope you really take something away from that especially because this is a place I I, I chose that because this is a place I personally like to visit regularly inside myself because mm -hmm. I always can draw something from there. So uh, I, I'm I'm hoping you you can utilize that also yourself. And uh, just one uh, last remind uh, re remark I wanted to make. Uh, we had that before the session started. Um, because I think that's also a, a, a great kind of a great sign for uh, for today for me. Uh, before our session, I had for a couple of years, I, uh, not years, a couple of weeks, <laughs> for a couple of weeks, I had problems with uh, my Zoom cam, Zoom and my camera. Uh, it used to work well on my browser. I'm on my browser, uh, on my browser, and uh, then um, suddenly there was a, an update or something, and I had several Zoom sessions. Um, where simp simply my camera wouldn't be available. Um, so I couldn't switch it on because it was just not available. And um, it, uh, so I, I couldn't use the camera on, on computer. So I had to go to the phone or something. So we had a little uh, meeting before the meeting to check if the, uh, if the camera works or if I have to switch to my phone. And uh, voila, the first time since this update and issue has come up i'm here with the camera in zoom <laughs> <laughs> wow that's alignment yeah. where we're as susanna said having non-attachment to our tech to our tech issues to let yeah. it go and work for us <laughs> i think that's that's an area for you lydia right <laughs> I know. I try. I try to have non-attachment, but I've been having tech stuff. Well, gee, it started really in two thousand and nine when yeah. the webmail scrambled thousands of my email lists. Uh, whenever, whenever you tell me about these awful things that are happening, uh, I, I, I feel this this air of you know exhaustion. That you're yeah. <laughs> yes, because now on you know being in a rural property. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was told when I moved here that there was high speed and then it, it changed and I've gone through different service providers, but you just stay. That's the word. Stay the course. Right. I, I just stay the course and, and not to um, not to carry the burden of it, but getting through it can sometimes be exhaust exhausting. <laughs> Technology exhaustion. That kind of <laughs> I can relate to that one. <laughs> You know, uh, but it's, uh, yeah, we all have our, our things that we're, we're working on. Um, but uh, yes, I'll do more.
clearing around uh, tech things for sure. Um, so I'm just going to end the recording. And then if anyone wants to stay um, for a few minutes, I know Susanna has to go soon. But thank you again, uh, Susanna. That was so, so much information of phenomenal value in in our life journeys that we can um, understand from your journey and also your incredible um, tool and service of this hypnotic trance um, approach that really does help you release the intellect, um, connect with your inner self, your inner knowing, and master your inner power, which just means that you are empowered to live the life that you want. Um, and it's so desperately needed at this time and going forward for the next 50 years or so. <laughs> okay, thank you so much.